Good morning and welcome to News at 6 on Metro TV. My name is Winston Taiki. Now let's take the major headlines for this morning. The People's National Convention, PNC, says it would soon come out with plans to convince Ghanaians to vote the party into office come 2024. And in news from elsewhere, death toll in explosion at crowded market in Nigeria, Saraba State rises to six. And now to our first story. The People's National Convention, PNC, says it will soon come out with plans to convince Ghanaians to vote the party into office come 2024. The General Secretary, Janet Nabla, says the party is formidable and poised to win the 2024 election and have made all plans in place to execute that action. The PNC has contested all national elections since the inception of the Fourth Republic. Although the party has never won a presidential election, it has maintained a spot among the top five parties since 1992. In the 2000 general election, the PNC obtained 10,882 votes, representing 0.8% to emerge fit, but failed to make a representation in Parliament. Earlier in 2004, however, the PNC won four parliamentary seats, its best performance yet. General Secretary, Janet Nabla is poised for a comeback and says the party is not far from winning the 2024 elections. 2024 is going to be a different year for the PNC. Although we will not come up with the terms, the terminologies of what we are going to do, but 2024 is going to be a different year, board game altogether for the PNC. The PNC is not planning to continue to be in perpetual opposition. We did not come into politics to remain in opposition and then become irrelevant. Whilst people take our ideologies and then they are not even using them properly, then we are now standing as a, 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 a outsiders watching other people using our ideas. On recent dispute among the party's leadership, Janet Nabla asserted that David Apasara, the embattled flag bearer of the party in the 2020 general elections, has indeed been suspended. He is a leader who has no experience, who has no maturity. I'm so sorry to use those words. And it's because of his immaturity that led PNC or led him to be now a former. Mr. Apasara has no power. Mr. Daniba has no power. I have no power. The power lies in the hands of the National Executive Committee and they took that power away from him and Mr. Daniba and boxed them together and gave it to Mr. Bala Mekankam. The party is expected to open nomination to elect constituency and general executive later in the year. Meanwhile, the General Secretary of PNC, Janet Nabla, has hinted that the party would present a candidate to contest the Asin North seat should it be declared vacant by the Electoral Commission. I think the people of Asin Fosu deserve peace. And to get that peace, they should vote for a neutral political party. And that party should be PNC. They should stop both the NPP and NDC from, from joking with their lives so that they can come back to PNC. They can come to PNC and then there will be peace for them. They should come, they should come to PNC. So we are going to contest. We have a, a, we have a candidate already we are eyeing, and he is from that place, very well endowed somehow, and we think that that man can be able to bring the seat to PNC. And we are also encouraging the, uh, the citizens of uh, Asin Fosu that we are begging them, they should vote for PNC so that there will be peace. When PNC, if they are with PNC, both MPP and NDC will not do anything. Any of them, the other one, it will cause, it will cause problems and there won't even be development in that uh, particular uh, decision. There won't be development. So for them to get development and get the peace of mind that they want, uh, then they should change a different political party. And the PNC have opened its arms to receive them. 
The executive secretary of Global Info Analytics Limited, Musa Dankwa, has predicted that the former president, John Dramani Mahama, is likely to win the 2024 polls, while adding that most Ghanaians have lost trust in the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. In same polls, the analysts also established that most Ghanaians have lost trust in the judiciary. Predictions about who wins the 2024 presidential elections have begun quite earlier. While the Economist Intelligence Unit has recently brought out a survey report predicting, amongst others, the opposition NDC will win 2024 elections, but without Mahama as a flag bearer, a recent survey conducted by another outfit, Global Info Analytics, has come out with another. In the latest research, President Mahama is likely to win the 2024 presidential elections. I did the baseline study uh, sometime in January. And April was the third month that we have to go back. So between 7th April and 18th April, we were in the field across 68 uh, constituencies in the country, in, in all the 16 regions. So the results started coming, coming back uh, yesterday. He also predicted the presidential fate of the current vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, ahead of the primaries. In January, His Excellency Baumia had a very commanding lead, as mm -hmm. you can see. And um, between that time and now, there has been a dramatic shift in the poll numbers. Um, we witnessed this across the entire country, in particular in the Akan areas. Dr. Baumia appears to have kind of disappeared. Uh, Alan won Ashanti region for the first time, which he lost in January. He's disappeared in the Akan area? Yes, in oh. terms of, in Eastern region in particular, it was so dramatic that he only got 8% of the vote in Eastern region. Not only was his initiative election-based research, to him, his quizzes on the judiciary indicated majority of Ghanaians have lost interest in the third arm of government. We asked them whether they have high confidence in the judiciary as mm -hmm. a whole. And about 26% said they have high or very high confidence. About 47% said they have low or very low confidence of the wow. judiciary as a whole. 47%? Yes. And then we said to them that in the case of Supreme Court in particular, how confident are you that they will be able to dispense justice without fear or favor, especially when it comes to political cases? And the same number, almost 27%, yes, they have confidence, and 47% said they have no confidence in that. So it's a stark kind of uh, revelation that this poll has shown us. What reflection does it give, especially in the case of the Supreme Court? I think this comes at the back of what Ken Depa has been saying and what people have been saying. Uh, and people are watching the news. They know what's happening. And this is a bit of reflection of what people, the sentiment of, of people in the country at the moment with regard to the judiciary and the Supreme Court in particular. Whether Musa Dankwe's prediction or findings are genuine, as well as that of the Economist Intelligence Unit, time is the definite answer to confirm these predictions in 2024. Meanwhile, there has been more reaction to the Economist Intelligence Unit's report uh, that projected the NDC as being the forefront of the 2024 elections. While some say it is too early, others are of the deal that NDC will win the election uh, without John Mahama or any other candidate standing for the seat. I'm currently live at one of the most popular newsstands here in the capital, uh, right underneath the Kwame Nkrumah interchange uh, here at Circle. Uh, and I'll be speaking to some ordinary people on what they make of uh, the EIU report, which is predicting that the NDC has a better chance of winning the 2024 elections, but uh, with a caveat that uh, they would have to do that without John Dramani Mahama. I've been joined here by Sam Obwache. He is uh, a news lover. He loves news to speak to him briefly on what he makes of this report. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Metro TV. Thank you. Good afternoon too. Right. So, Mr. Obwache, you've, you've, you've heard the report and you've seen what uh, they've said. The report is saying that the NDC has a better chance of winning the 2024 elections. Uh, without, but you have to do that without Mahama. What do you make of this report? Oh, please, I don't support their report. Because I know the current government is doing a bit, a, a very good work, has done a very good work because I'm of age. I saw Kwame Nkrumah when we got independence, I was 10 years of age. I completed school in 1964. So I knew the history of the, this country. 
So I know what the government has done it. If, uh, if, if nothing, free SHS from Boko to Accra, children are going to school free. That is a great achievement. When you say that NDC has the power, to me, I don't think so. Whether they change their leadership or not, I don't think so. Why am I saying this? Now, everywhere in the world, you see, government seek the wealth of what do you call the, the youth. The youth is for the, for, for the government. You, are, you get me what I'm talking about. But Ghana is not like that. It's just the opposite. Yeah, in the case of uh, President Kufuado, who has initiated NADMU and all those things, you see, doing so much with so many interventions. Oshe NDC current tila. When you be a way well marketed, maybe in another example, answer in another way, maybe we need 2016 or about for three times. At that, at that moment, why now the neighbor? Because it's about business and as a nipa, where you well marketed. One other new court, a jazz or so cotton, you're better. One team first is the only team for beer, ma, say. John Dramani Mahama is the most marketable person in the NDC. As it happened in the 2008, 2012 and 2016 election, it took Akofado three major elections before he became president. The NDC would have to up its game and they could win the 2024 elections with John Dramani Mahama. Now, away from that, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly has vowed to eject persons who trade on the street within the Assembly. The traders who have asked to be resettled have also vowed not to move an inch. Sadi Hlodi has been speaking to some of the traders. Thousands of traders ply their trade here in conditions which sometimes can be described as dangerous. These traders have taken over the streets completely compelling pedestrians to battle with the vehicles for space. The Accra Metro Assembly's decision to move these traders off the pavement is meeting resistance. We have uh, putting in efforts to ensure that in as much as we clear them off the street, uh, measures are also put in place to um, uh, expand our market to be able to accommodate um, them in the long run. Nicolina, who sells plastic packages, said the huge cost of shops has prevented her from acquiring one. Omo the forms, but even this more, omo the forms by say, you be mine, you be chefs, am I here? inside. So you be a. I wish I had one of the shops to sell in and leave the roadside trading, but AMA promised and filled, and now the shop are sold in dollars. Theodora, who also sells in front of the Makola Mall, said she doesn't have a shop or a shelf. So she prefers trading on the pavement. She wants the AMA to reduce the cost of shops so they can acquire one. I don't have shops, so I prefer the AMA tickets because the rich have taken over the shops. And when I close, I leave my goods at someone's house and pay 10 cities. Razak, who sells onions on the street, said, Though they were relocated to Kotoku, not all of them got shops and so he had to come back onto the street. I couldn't go to Kotoku even though I'm an onion seller because the shops have been already occupied and sucking us from the street will not help me. Some of the traders also spoke about how much they paid for the hawkers market at Nkrumah Circle and yet did not get a shop while lamenting fake tickets given them by alleged AMA officers. If you don't pay for the tickets, your goods are carried away and an amount of hundred cities is collected by the officials. So we need a place before ejected from the streets. Responding to the claims, the public relations officer of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Gilbert Ankara, said the decision to take traders off the streets is in their own interest. He denies shops are expensive, insisting that the traders have shops but prefer to sell on the streets. Kindly, as I speak to you now, there are some traders occupying the sheds. And you can uh, 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 go and then inquire for them. The assembly is not even charging any them anything. Uh, 
to get them back into the shed. No. Stay and stay. We'll be back with more news after this break. Welcome back to News at 6. My name is Winston Taiki. We are live on Metro TV as well as streaming on our Facebook and Twitter handle at Metro TV GH. Now to another story. The Ministry of Education has released some 67 million cities for the feeding of teacher trainees who until to yesterday had been informed to provide their own meals until their feeding allowances have been paid. Conference of Principals of College of Education had directed that teacher trainees will have to start feeding themselves beginning May 8, 2022, due to their inability to make payment of food supplies. According to Princoff, food suppliers who had continued delivering supplies to these colleges of education for months without payment have finally withdrawn their services till they receive the monies owed them. But before the trainee teachers announced their next line of action after registering their displeasure over the action, the Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Educhum, announced monies had been released to ensure payment of food supplies. The government has released 67,942,652 CDs uh, to colleges of education. I know you may have um, read the media reports. There were many calls on us uh, to respond to concerns of Prinkoff and wanted to take advantage of um, your presence here to let the country know uh, that the President of the Republic, the Finance Minister, and all those who have worked hard to ensure that various promises made to colleges of education are carried through has won us again are delivered on their promise and that is why this amount has been released to colleges of education. Staying on the same issue, meanwhile, the principal of the Accra College of Education, Dr. Samuel Atin Toto, says the 67 million cities year marked to be dispersed by government is inadequate to cater for student feeding. According to him, the college has for the past five months managed to pay suppliers through their internally generated funds. It's almost lunchtime at the Accra College of Education. Caterers are busy at work. Soon, they may have less to do as the school lacks stock to provide three square meals for the students. The stock in the storeroom have depleted and the suppliers have refused to provide more due to the school's inability to pay. Lunch is served, but the meals enjoyed by the students will soon be cut short. In a letter, the National Conference of Principals of Education Ghana stated that teacher trainees may have to, from May 8, consider feeding themselves. This has got them worried. It is going to affect us a lot because some of us, our morning, breakfast, lunch and supper, all of them, we get it from the dining hall. So if this is not going to continue again, or even if they are going to cut some parts off, it is really, really going to affect us and our stay on campus. Their feeding is tied to their teacher training allowances, which have also been in arrears for seven months. The feeding component comes with the allowance. So if the feeding component comes, then it means your allowance is also coming. But for the past one year now, we haven't received allowance. The government is owing us about 1,200. Then this month will add up another 400. Uh, for some, getting food from vendors is not an option. So for the vendors out there, their food is expensive out there, so we can't be buying them. I remember before when we resumed on January, we were buying egg for one CD, then it went to one CD 20 pesos. But now we buy egg at one CD 50 pesos and then two CDs. Even the small sausages now, one CD 50 pesos. And even Banku and KNK is now two CDs, three CDs. So everything is expensive out there, serious. Looking at the location of our school today, it doesn't help. It's gone. everything is really expensive here. To me, when we get it, when, it, when I get the food and I eat, I'm okay. If I don't get it, it's fine because we, we have to fast. Imano Che Jamra is the SRC president of the school. What we will plead to the Students Loan and Trust Fund because they are in charge of 
the allowances. So student loan and trust fund, STLF, should work harder for us to um, reposition things, for us to have these allowances. And they should also pay the arrears to the college or the colleges in Ghana so that they can also get uh, uh, money to pay their debtors for now because they are owing them. Announcements by the Education Minister Yao Educhim that schools will be given money to tackle their immediate challenges followed the threat from the principals. The principal of Accra College of Education, however, says the 67 million cities to be disbursed is inadequate. So the supply, you don't pay them. So you assure them one month, two months, and it gets to four, five months. That is where we are, and some of them are now saying, no, unless you pay us, we're not in a position to supply. It was a non-teaching staff that went on a strike, and uh, we we're trying to manage that one. And uh, at the background, we knew that we have this crisis on our hand too. So for the first time, I'm hearing 67 million. If that is true, I think it will assist or it will help us solve the problem. But I'm not too sure the entire figure involved 67 million is enough. Uh, bear in mind, part of it is for the students. Question would then be, I don't have the details unless I ask my national executives as whether this 67 million is for the feeding component or it is also the students' bit which they have not also received. Uh, whichever the, the case, uh, it will be uh, an assistant in some direction. Yeah, I only hope that it is released or it will be released very soon. Eugenia Akofakumi reporting for Metro News. Now let's move to the city of Kumasi. The management of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has alleged that some students who are being asked to defer their courses for non-payment of fees have channeled their fees into sports betting and other business ventures. The university's public relations officer, Dr. Samuel Norris Bekoy, spoke to our Shanti Regional Correspondent, Abdul Basit Suleiman. The University Relations Officer, Dr. Daniel Norris Bekwe, in an interview with Metro News confirmed that more than 6,000 students of KNUST were forced to defer their courses due to their inability to pay their tuition fees by the deadline. The deadline for the payment of fees was extended from March 24, 2022 to April 7, 2022, but some students were still not able to settle their fees. Those who are genuinely needy, they have they know what to do they are within the system they go with the system has a way of supporting those people this particular group of people we are talking about they are not really these students they are students who have genuinely squandered their fees according to him some students have invested their school fees in ventures such as betting buying vehicles for online riding hailing services and bakery what we have been asking is that parents should take interest in the in the, in the education of their wards most of the time, a lot of parents don't even care. Even from secondary school, they don't follow up. Some parents don't even know where their students are, their children are staying, whether they are pursuing the courses or not. According to Dr. Bequin, the students who have deferred represent 8% of the entire student population. The Boat Owners Association of Tongo Gemini in the Voto region say the recent boat accident that took 30 lives uh, was due to inadequate premix fuel. At a press conference in Ho addressed by MP for South Day on behalf of the boat owners, they alleged the boat had inadequate fuel and so could not speed away from the storm that caused the accident. Over 30 lives were lost when a boat capsized on Easter Thursday, 14th April 2022. The boat was traveling from Tongo, Germany, in the South Dai district of the Volta region to Havakope in the Afram Plains North district of the Eastern region. According to the boat owners, the boat had very little premix due to shortages. Uh, it happened also as a result of the fact that uh, our boat owners didn't have enough fuel but later you are here, they didn't have enough fuel. And so when they saw danger coming, it was difficult for them to sail or ride away from danger. According to the boat owners, Premix fuel shortage has been of concern to them. Premix fuel is essential in day-to-day -day transport activities on the Volta Lake and facilitates the movement of boats in a safer and convenient manner. 
The shortage of this essential commodity, according to the boat owners, is a cause for concern. They pleaded with authorities to ensure frequent supply of premix fuel. The boat owners say the incident could have been avoided but for the outboard motor going off course due to the shortage of premix fuel. They also pleaded for life jackets while commanding the Ghana Navy and the Army for sending a helicopter to assist in retrieving the bodies. Stick and stay with us as we take a break. We'll be back with more news here on News Aztec. Stay tuned. Welcome back to News at 6. My name is Winston Taiki. Now to some major headlines. Uh, latest figures from the Ghana Statistical Service shows that Ghana's economy expanded by 5.4% in 2021, far higher than the 0.4% recorded in the year 2020. We also look at this from the subsectors and perspective, and as was indicated, we saw the services sector being in the lead followed by the industry sector and the least being the agricultural um, sector. We also look at this from the annual perspective, keeping in mind that with a growth rate of 3.6 for the first quarter of 2021, the second quarter growth rate of 4.2, the third quarter growth rate of 6.5, and the last quarter growth rate of 7.0, the overall growth rate for 2021 stood at 5.4%, which corresponds to 459,130.9 million. With the just ended population and housing census, this translates to a per capita GDP of 2,565 Ghana cities as per capita GDP for the year 2021. On a quarter on quarter basis, as was indicated, for the last quarter of 2021, we did record 1.8 growth rate relative to the third quarter of 2021. Imani Africa says Ghana lost over 443 million cities to procurement irregularities by public institutions annually. According to a recent consultant at Imani Center for Policy and Education, Dennis Asari, this is as a result of lack of enforcement of PPAs. The event was organized by Imani Center for Policy and Education in collaboration with the Africa Center for Energy Policy on the theme, Is the Public Sector Procurement System Hurting or Saving the Public Purse? Speaking at the event, a research consultant at Imani, Dennis Asari, says the increase in abuse of public procurement laws has led to irregularities and high expenditures. 42% of our additional COVID-19 spending of about $2 billion in 2020 can be attributed to the uh, cost or the procurement during the pandemic. Uh, beyond the increased spending during that period, we also recorded some of the highest form of abuse of the procurement law during the same period, according to the auditor general. We've seen public procurement being marked or characterized by some sort of corruption, political interference, and insider manipulation. The reforms that we are implementing are not directly translating into minimizing procurement irregularities Country manager of the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, Stella Akuadu, called for the transparency in the procurement process. That appointment by the president, I don't agree to that. If you want a system to work, most of the time the independent people bring in their input and then they can have that lens to look at it critically okay. and tell you where you are going wrong or what is wrong and then we can all work on it. Okay. But if you have people who are like a family, they are all inside. How, even if they are seeing the things that are wrong, they are not going to talk about them because they report to somebody, uh, you know, like the president or government or something like that. Editor-in-chief of the fourth estate, Manasi Azure Awuni, reiterated the need for accountability. If you get into public office, have the mentality that you are working for the interest of the state. And I think going forward, single source procurement, restricted tendering, if there has to be approvals, the PPA should stay off it. The various entity uh, tender committees, depending on the value of the transaction, should be made responsible so that if they misconduct themselves, the PPA can now come in and then sanction them. The research by Imani showed that most state institutions abuse the public procurement laws and fail to disclose their financial transactions as cited by the Auditor General's report. 
Now, away from that, in a letter released to the media, the Bank of Ghana announced the appointment by its board of directors of Professor Festus Ebo Texan as an external member of the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee. Professor Texan is a development economist with specialization in macroeconomics and finance, monetary and financial economics, small and medium enterprises development, industrial policy, applied microeconometrics, and international trade policy and finance. He is an associate professor of economics at the University of Ghana with an economics research teaching and consultancy career spanning over 20 years. He holds a PhD in economics from the University of Nottingham and is a member of the Lehom Leverhom Center for Research on Globalization and Economic Policy of the School of Economics of the Nottingham University. He is also a member of many years standing of the Africa Economic Research Consortium. Professor Texan replaced his Dr. John Kwachi, who retired as an external member of the MPC, having served the statutory term limit. The Board of Directors of the Bank of Ghana extends warm appreciation to Dr. Kwachi for his contributions to monetary policy deliberations and formulation during his tenure. The Bank of Ghana uh, is confident that the Professor Texan will be an important addition to the membership of the MPC and will contribute his vast experience to the work of the MPC. And now let's bring you some sports updates. Referee Joseph Kenny Paddy has been suspended for the rest of the league season after the match review panel of the Ghana Football Association decided that the referee erred in awarding a penalty to Asante Kotoko in their Ghana Premier League match 24 game against Accra House of Oak. The panel, later after a thorough scrutiny on the footage, concluded that in the 40th minute of play, Referee Kenny Paddy awarded a dubious penalty to Asante Kotoko when House of Oak player Nuruddin Abdulaziz won a 50-50 ball in their 18th yard box from Fabio Gama of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. According to the report from the association, the referee failed to defend his decision and later admitted that there was no stepping of the foot as he claimed. Still on sports, Division 2 side Zelina FC has secured a semi-final berth in the ongoing 2022 Al Nassel Youth Ramadan Football Tournament. The contingent will comprise of 16 players and four officials of the Division 2 side. MSK Zelina Africa has been in the Gulf region for the past two weeks for a training tour and represent Ghana in the competition to commemorate the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. After settling down in Dubai, the Chado based team has been engaging in a series of training sessions to fine tune themselves and adjust to the weather conditions and cultural norms in that country before the commencement of the El Nasri Youth Ramadan Football tournament. After an impressive start to the prestigious tournament, the Ghana side then played against Garden United in a match that produced five goals. Young striker Ishmael Saki produced a stunning performance during the tie against Garden United and scored a hat-trick in a 5-0 elimination. Imanu Asante and Abubakar Gado scored the other two goals for MSK Zelina Africa. Determined to make amends during the tournament, the yellow and green shirted team then marched onto the field against El Nasri FC in the quarterfinals of the competition. Edged on by the CEO of the club, Ismailante, and some few Ghanaians at the venue, Zelina Africa took the game to the opponent despite the earlier dominance by the home team. After some interpositional passes and missed chances on the part of both sides, Emmanuel Asante and Abubakar Gado won the game for the Ghanaian side. Zelena Africa won the match 2-1 to book a place in the semi-finals of the El Nasri Youth Ramadan Tournament. The semi-finals of the championship will be honored on Thursday, 21st April, and Zelena Africa are likely to take on either El An or Al Jazeera in the last four stage. The finals of the 2022 El Nasri Youth Ramadan Tournament will come off on the 22nd April in the presence of some big and influential football administrators, businessmen, state officials from UAE and other neighboring countries. Let's bring you golf. 
Director of the Professional Golfers Association of Ghana, Akwesi Prempe, has called on government and private entities to invest in the sports. We want our boys to travel outside. We need the ministry support. We need the government support. And I can assure you, as you know, that we have players that can make Ghana proud, that can bring a lot of dollars, not just thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to Ghana economy. So I will plead through this, your station, that government and the corporate Ghana have to take golf serious because there is more into golf. We want to see our boys there. And I believe the whole West Africa, there is no country that can match Ghana. So if we have the support from our ministry, golf will reach a certain stage that will go beyond everybody's understanding. Now let's bring you some entertainment news. Around 400 people registered for this year's tandem flight with professional pilots rivaling some of Kweku's festival's most popular years. If you missed Kweku, uh, Kweku Easter celebration this year, here's a story put together by our entertainment decks. Once a year, thousands of people from around the world flock to the usually quiet Ghanaian towns of Kwehu and Alibi, around 150 kilometers north of the capital Accra. They come for a paragliding festival and carnival that residents hope may establish the West African nation as a hub for extreme sports. Go, 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 go. Kwei was one of only four Ghanaian paragliders to fly solo at this year's festival. Most people think it's not a safe sport. And, and people have like a mentality of like, oh no, these are only for white people, that kind of thing. But, and all those people who say that, they've never been here. So they always discourage their friends, don't do it. But when their friends come and they do it, and like, Ah, but it's that easy like that, so why haven't I been doing like that? Then they, we ask them, where can I learn? How do I go about it? Then I also start giving them information. Stephen Owusu Asamoah, a Ghanaian living in the United States, returned to his hometown of Kwe with his own kite and gear earlier this month, eager to participate in the festival after learning to fly last year. You know, sometimes representation is good. You know, when you see people that look like you doing what you're doing, they're like, oh, I could also get into it. You see what I'm saying? So I feel it's going to really motivate a lot of people. Yeah. According to Kwei, paragliding has taught him lessons that have reshaped his personal life in ways he never thought possible. I used to be, <laughs> I used to be like quick tempered. If I drive on the street, then you just cross me. I'll just give it to you. Like, but now I look at certain things and I'm like, no, it's not necessary. Let's just let it go. Like, you know, so it has made me a calm person. I look at things like before I make a decision, I have to think and rethink and like just go. It was any decision that I make will affect whatever I do. Thank you for watching News of Six. That'll be all for all the major uh, uh, bulletins. Uh, my name is Winston Taki. Have a good business day.